Thanks so much, Lauren. Thanks, Catherine. Good to, good to see everyone here and uh, to be with everyone today. Uh, my name is Russ Winans. Uh, I'm the coordinator for uh, student organizations and involvement on campus. Um, I've actually been uh, part of Cal State Channel Island since 2005. I was a, a transfer student back in 2005. Not sure how many transfer students are on the call, uh, but uh, relate to that nonetheless. Uh, graduated in 2007, and then I've had the privilege um, uh, the opportunity to work on campus full-time in the Division of Student Affairs since 2008, and just so glad to be with you here today. And I'll let Lauren introduce herself, I guess, again. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Russ. Um, my name is Lauren. I work with Campus Recreation, uh, specifically with our sports clubs on campus. Um, I'm also an alumni of CI, and I graduated in 2017. Um, I worked as a student for Campus Rec for three years and now as a professional staff member for four years. Awesome, great. Well, we have a uh, PowerPoint presentation, so I'm gonna share my screen in just a second um, and kind of give you an overview of our clubs and orgs and some of the things that uh, relate to getting involved on campus. So let me open that up for us. And here we go. Great, can everyone see that? Or thumbs up maybe from Lauren or folks? Okay, cool. All right, um, so just an overview of where we're headed. We've already introduced ourselves uh, and definitely wanna welcome you here. We're so glad to have you. Um, so we'll start by just giving a brief overview, kind of uh, you know um, who, who we are as clubs and organizations on campus, some different categories of clubs. Um, we'll drill down a little bit more into the sports clubs and that's really Lauren's expertise. So she's gonna take that part for us. Um, and then uh, we thought we'd share a little bit about CI Sync, um, which, which is our platform we use for clubs to engage online, um, do business behind the scenes and promote events and activities. And then at the end, of course, we'll have a Q&A. Um, so get your questions ready. We're, we're glad to answer them. Um, so with that, I'll move to the first slide here. Um, so just kind of uh, overview uh, right now, currently we have uh, just over 60 clubs, I think it's 65 specifically um, on campus um, from a lot of different categories of clubs. And, and we'll go over those categories in just a moment. Um, lots of different students are involved in different positions. Um, so maybe similar to your prior campus or high school, uh, we have uh, positions such as a president, treasurers. We've got folks that are assigned to be social media um, coordinators, um, planning events, uh, working on outreach and recruitment. Um, all types of things, lots of different leadership roles within those organizations, um, committees that folks are a part of as well. Um, currently, we, we have about 2,000 students uh, of our student population um, that are enrolled. Um, about 2,000 of them are what we would say actively involved with clubs and organizations, meaning they're attending meetings or participating in, in events um, and helping um, perhaps lead the organizations. Uh, one, one of the things that's, um, I'd say, unique about Cal State Channel Islands um, is that our faculty and staff um, are oftentimes very involved with clubs and organizations. So we have a requirement for each of our clubs and organizations to be, um, to be recognized. They have to have a faculty or staff member as an advisor. So the advisor is not running the show. They're, they're definitely um, there to provide support and guidance. Uh, it's definitely a student-led organization, uh, but great opportunities for, for students to network with faculty um, and, and staff outside of the classroom. So, uh, we currently have about 50 um, staff and faculty who volunteer their time to serve as advisors uh, for these different clubs. Um, so the next uh, series of slides are going to be um, highlighting some of our different categories. So this first slide here, um, we've got academic clubs on our campus. So kind of think like traditional major, right? We've got a math club, we have a history club, English club, psychology, sociology, and, and many others. Um, there's also some other groups that uh, land in the academic category that aren't necessarily connected to a major at CI, um, but perhaps um, someone is uh, interested in, in grad school. So we have a, a physician assistant club with uh, students that are interested in PA school. We've had a pre-optometry club in the past. Um, we have an American Medical Student Association. Um, so lots of different uh, academic groups, and that's a great way to connect with peers, to you know, host study groups, um, connect with faculty, again, that are advisors, oftentimes guest speakers are coming in to connect with um, the academic groups and share information um, that's really helpful and beneficial to the students. Uh, we have national honor societies as well. We have a few different ones. Um, we have some that are 
uh, based on a GPA requirement. So for example, you might need to have you know, a high GPA in order to be a member. Um, some of them are based on a specific major. Um, in other cases, a class standing, like only senior standing. Um, but some great honor societies that, again, provide opportunities for networking, um, career placement, um, just an opportunity to serve in the community. The image on the right there is for our Gamma Beta Phi Honor Society, uh, which has a philanthropy focus. So part of being a member of that organization, um, high, high GPA, but also a commitment to service and uh, getting involved in the community and, and supporting the community in a special way. Uh, the picture there is our business club. Um, I think it was a, a couple years ago, um, they did a tour, kind of like a field trip, I guess, uh, with some faculty and, and uh, met at a, a, a GM site and kind of learned behind the scenes operations of what goes on um, in that operation. So that, that's pretty common uh, for many of our clubs. They make connections with the community and um, do some travel in that kind of way. Um, next slide here, uh, service clubs, environmental uh, focus clubs, social justice clubs, political clubs. Uh, bottom right there is a picture of um, some of our green generation leaders from, I think that was three semesters ago, four semesters ago, maybe fall 2020. Um, they were tabling, uh, raising awareness about some of the environmental causes that they're passionate about. Uh, on the top left is a picture of students at a local beach. I believe it's Ormond uh, Beach here locally. Um, and they are doing a fence repair. Um, so the Audubon Club is uh, part of a national organization serving um, uh, different bird migrations um, and that particular beach um, needs to be uh, really protected um, from people just coming and, and making a mess of things when the birds are you know migrating um, so the students are out there working with a local partner to repair that beach um, and the other picture there is um, some really outstanding student leaders that I feel really privileged I've been able to work with uh, the past few semesters um, from our Empowered Women of Color group, and, and they're doing just great work uh, in the social justice world and empowering folks and advocating. Um, and then our next slide. So we have uh, quite a few different pictures here and some great colors going on. Um, so we have uh, a variety of cultural clubs on campus. The picture on the bottom left is our Ballet Folklorico Club. Um, so they've got some just outstanding performers, um, and that was actually a performance that I believe they did on campus um, early, early in the semester, um, in the fall of 2020. Um, I think it was around Day of the Dead, uh, perhaps, um, but they you know, are out there doing performances, they practice on campus, um, those dresses are actually a part of, of being a member in the group, uh, they were able to um, you know, get those dresses through being a part of the group. Uh, the top picture there um, in the center um, is our Queer Student Alliance group. Uh, that's a picture of them. I believe it was a pride parade or a pride event um, in Thousand Oaks. Um, so the students were connecting with folks in the community and participating in that way. And the bottom right um, is our Sigma Omega Nu um, sorority. So we have uh, five sororities on campus, uh, one fraternity, um, and Sigma Omega Nu. I believe I saw them on the schedule there, so you'll hear more about them. But they're our first... Uh, uh, national sorority and just a great group um, all, all across the board. So um, I think our next slide, I'm going to turn it over to Lauren here and she'll tell, tell us a little bit more about uh, sports clubs. Thanks, Russ. So um, all of our sports clubs on campus, we currently have 11. Um, they're housed under campus recreation. So um, here we have our men's soccer club and our sailing club. Um, to name a few others, we have volleyball, um, women's soccer, cycling, a running club that does 5Ks, 10Ks, and triathlons, um, and then a baseball club, um, among others. So all of these clubs are equivalent to playing on a club soccer team or a travel baseball team. So no NCAA sports yet, um, but we do have the competitive aspect still, if that's what you're looking for. Um, so some of our teams, like soccer, for example, they have uh, travel teams, so they do host tryouts every semester. Um, and if you don't make the travel team, you're more than welcome to still be a part of the practice team and attend any other club events that they hold. Um, one thing that's cool about the sports clubs is that they travel all over California. So you can find yourself in Chico at a bike race um, and in San Diego for a soccer game or a lacrosse game. So. Um, they still get that travel aspect and you still get to be competitive if you want. Um, next slide, please. All right, and some other clubs pictured here. We have our hockey club um, at the top there. They play at the Simi Valley Isoplex. And then um, on the bottom right, we have our women's soccer club with our cheer club. Um, cheer is a performance-based team. Um, you got to see two of our girls today, which was really awesome. 
Um, they perform uh, for different campus events and also cheer for our soccer teams, lacrosse club, and for hockey. And then for our surf club, which is the last picture here, um, super awesome, tight-knit group. Uh, they go surfing all the time together. And um, one thing that's unique about this club is that every semester, every year, we always have individuals that make it to state and nationals. So they're always representing CI. Um, that QR code right there will take you to our sports clubs page um, that lists all of the officer information. So if you're interested in any particular club, you can contact the president directly. Um, and then Russ is going to talk a little bit more about CI Sync in a bit. Um, the last thing I have about sports clubs is that um, they are unique in the fact that you do need to pay an insurance fee in order to be a member. Um, that's just a supplemental insurance in case you were to get injured when you're playing. Um, and the only club that doesn't have that is sailing because they have a group insurance policy that they do. But if you have any questions about that, I'm more than happy to answer at the end. Um, all right, next slide. Okay, so why get involved? That's the big question here. Um, so uh, national data has shown that retention and a higher GPA are a result of being involved on campus. So retention means that you come in as a freshman or a transfer and you graduate from that institution. Um, and staying in one spot will really help a GPA because you're able to have more consistency. Um, also, you have many opportunities for leadership and development as Russ stated already. Um, you can be involved in your community with engagement. You can make those faculty and staff connections. Um, and like you saw with one of the clubs that he mentioned, um, networking opportunities and career exploration through your own passions and through maybe discovering a new passion by joining a club that you never thought you might. Um, and above all, I think that clubs and orgs are really important for building friendships and um, creating a community on campus because um, when you have that community, it just makes life a lot more fun. So um, next, Russ is going to talk a little bit more about CIC. Awesome. Thanks, Lauren. Um, yeah, so uh, this slide here, uh, we wanted to highlight just to kind of reinforce, um, there's a lot going on uh, with clubs and orgs on campus and programs and departments. Um, so this is just a snapshot. In just a moment, we'll actually go into our CI Sync platform and kind of show you around. But this is a snapshot here of some event cards um, that you would see on CI Sync. So when a department or um, a club is hosting an event, they'll, they'll put it on the calendar. Um, and it'll look like this. So this was just from last month. Um, you can see there's a few different examples there of some activities that are happening. Um, but our, our clubs are, are really active. You know, um, the statistics that we have, the data there um, on a tip, typical year when, when we're meeting, you know, regularly in person, uh, we averaged about 1400 activities that were happening over the course of the year. And that's really just clubs and orgs. That's not talking about departments and, and all the other programs that do great things on campus. So. Um, our, our clubs are doing lots of stuff. So everything Lauren mentioned there, you know, the opportunities to network and, and connect with people, build a family. Um, there's lots of opportunities to do that. Um, so on this next page here, um, I'll give you just a sec. If you'd like to, you don't have to do, do this, but if you'd like to, the webpage link at the bottom, um, the csuci.campuslabs.com uh, backslash engage um, or the QR code right here, that'll actually take you to um, our CI Sync page. Um, so I'll give you a second to do that if you're interested. And in just a moment, I'll, I'll switch over to the other screen. Um, and what we'll show you on this, this page um, in just a moment is um, there, there's two different, two different ways to look at it. So I, I doubt right now everyone's able to log in and that's okay. Um, there, there's a public uh, facing view of this page. Um, and when you're in the public facing view, you can still access um, a good amount of things. Um, so I'm gonna switch over right now that coming up for you, Lauren? Okay, great. So this is our, our home page. I'm logged in right now. Um, so, so I might have a different view than some of you that chose to use the QR code or type in the link there. Um, but, but again, just to reiterate, um, if you wanna check this out on your own, you don't have to sign in um, using your credentials yet. Uh, eventually you'll want to, and I'll show you why. Um, but basically this, this is a landing page here for anybody that's interested in getting involved. Um, that also serves as the behind the scenes um, kind of business side of clubs and orgs. So they've got forms they need to fill out, requests that they're putting in. Um, they all do that on the back end. But for, for folks that are interested in finding out what's going on, I'll just give you a few kind of pointers here. Um, at the top of this task bar, you see um, events, organization, and news. Um, those are three great places that I'd recommend checking out at your own uh, convenience. 
Um, they're basically directories for events and organizations, and then kind of like a news feed um, for um, like news posts and, and then things that are going on. So I'm going to go ahead and click into the events here um, and just kind of give you an idea of, of what you might see um, when, you're, when you're interested in getting connected. So um, again, you see all these event cards, um, clubs, departments are hosting things. Um, I'll click, I can click into one in just a moment, but just kind of scroll in here. You, you can see a lot of different things going on just the next few days. Um, events, guest speakers, study groups, a movie, in, movie night, a research showcase. Um, you can see down at the bottom, there, there's 109 activities that are currently scheduled um, for the next few weeks. Um, so if, if the settings are, are put to public, um, you'd be able to see you know, these things, um, may, maybe not necessarily join the event, um, but you could at least see what's going on. Um, if, of, if of interest to you, you can also search, you can kind of, you know, filter um, by selecting categories. So there's some different categories that a club or department might pick uh, for the, the type of event that they're having, and you can kind of filter that way. Um, back up to the top uh, along the taskbar there, organization. So this is really uh, the best place to go. If you're curious, like, you know, Lauren and Russ mentioned a, a bunch of, you know, categories of clubs and, and highlighted a few uh, of those clubs, but who else is here? Right, you know, who, who do we actually have on campus? This will give you an idea. Um, so you can scroll through this kind of same idea. Um, all of our clubs, departments, different entities, we have the student government here, our student newspaper, the CI View, um, and it goes, goes on again. So you can kind of scroll through um, that way. Uh, you can also filter this too. So like, let's say your, exam your example is um, you wanna check out like cultural clubs. So you could click on cultural and it's gonna kind of narrow it down a bit to clubs that, have identified themselves um, as having a, a cultural focus or a cultural component. Um, so kind of the next step from there, because um, this is you know, a brief description of each club, a Filipino club, um, a Mecha that we have on campus. If you wanna get more information, you just go ahead and you click uh, on that link and it's gonna take you to their page. Um, so every page is a little bit different. Um, apologize, it was just loading there. Um, so you can see Mecha, for example, they've got a YouTube video that they've put on their page. You can learn a little bit more about them. They've got some photos here in the top right, uh, a pretty great description. It gives you a lot of details about who they are and what they're all about, uh, contact information, links to their social media pages, um, events that they have coming up um, in the next uh, few weeks, uh, officers, advisors. So for example, if you wanted to contact Andrea, who's the co-chair, kind of like a co-president of the club, the co-chair, you click on her name and there, there's her email and, and she, um, as the uh, leader of the club, would uh, be a great person to reach out to and ask questions. Um, if you didn't want to, you know, contact someone directly, uh, back up at the top of the page, um, there's a contact button. Um, so this contact button, you just click that, um, it'll bring up kind of a, you know, pre-populated uh, message box um, saying, you know, something like, I want to get involved or I have a question and you type in um, that information and it'll send a message to the primary contact for the organization. Uh, when that time comes, you're ready to join the organization, you're excited about it, uh, this blue button right here, um, or the button that says join, you just click that button and then there'll be instructions uh, for, for what's next. Every group is a little bit different um, as far as um, what the process is for joining the organization. So, um, some groups might have some membership requirements, membership dues, um, others, um, again, like an honor society might have um, some sort of check that needs to be made to make sure that you meet qualifications. And others are just open membership that anybody can join pretty much at any time and they're glad to have you. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for the homepage here. I'm not sure what you exactly would have access to on the public view, um, but this is kind of what it looks like. You can see memberships, different events, um, latest news um, and some other details. Once you are involved in the community and as a student, then you can access your personal account and update settings and um, add a photo and all that type of stuff too. Um, so let me go back here and pull up the PowerPoint again and we'll move on. Okay, so uh, I know we'll have a Q&A here in just a moment, um, but right before we get to that, I wanted to make sure you, you all had our contact information. So uh, Lauren and I work really closely together and the different staff in her office, as well as um, uh, folks that work in my office. 
Um, so I think you can reach out to either of us and we'll make sure you get connected to the right person. So if you have questions about clubs and orgs, uh, feel free to contact either of us. But uh, both departments have social media accounts on Instagram. So the handles are listed there. So for the student orgs office, it's uh, at CI underscore student orgs. Um, and for campus rec, all sports clubs, intramurals, all that great stuff, uh, at CSUCI underscore rec. And then um, email campus recreation at csuci.edu. And then for the student orgs office, it's involvement at csuci.edu. Um, and, and of course, you can always reach out um, either of those ways, uh, email, direct message us. Uh, glad to chat with you and answer questions at any time. Um, and I think that is the end of our session uh, presentation. Um, and we'll turn it over to Catherine and we're glad to hang around and ask questions if there are questions. Yes, thank you, Lauren. And thank you, Russ, for that great presentation. We actually have a lot of questions here for you guys. So um, I'm going to go just down the list, OK? So does CI have a pre-dental club? Pre-dental club, we do not right now. Um, but that's definitely a possibility if, if students want to start a club. I uh, didn't mention that in the session. Um, but to start a club, you need five total students. Um, so five enrolled students, uh, we would identify officers. Um, so a president, vice president, treasurer would be the typical positions um, and find an advisor and some other nuts and bolts behind the scenes. But um, no pre-dental club right now, uh, but definitely open to creating one if that's of interest to students. Thank you. Can a student join different clubs and organization? I think the question would be like being a member of multiple organizations. Is that? I believe correct? so. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, so um, yes, get involved. Um, I would add a caution there to not get over involved, right? Um, <laughs> and there is no limit. Uh, there is no policy that says you can't be involved in lots of organizations. Um, I, I would say most students are involved in a few organizations, maybe like two or three organizations. Uh, where I would, uh, you know, push the, the caution um, or, or hesitate a bit is to be a leader of too many organizations might take mm. a lot of time um, and energy away from academics and, and maybe work and other responsibilities. So yeah, by all means, join, 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 um, but maybe, you know, think mm -hmm. through what it means to be a leader for multiple organizations. Thank you. What, uh, let's see, do, do, do. what is the name of the fraternity? The fraternity on campus that's currently recognized is Beta Gamma Nu, um, and they're part of a, a regional uh, a fraternity group. Um, so I believe they're on, I think, 11 other campuses on multiple states. Um, and they've been active at Cal State Channel Islands, I think, for almost four years now, about three and a half, four years. All right. Do you provide money for travel for the soccer team? That's a good question for Lauren. Yes. So um, all of our sports clubs have an allocated budget for each year, and it's up to the club officers to allocate money for each trip. Um, so typically for our soccer teams, they um, allocate money to pay for reimbursement for fuel because um, everyone's driving their own cars to the game. Um, typically, that's what they'll do for travel. Um, soccer doesn't really have any overnight trips, so they're kind of like there and back. OK. Hmm. Is there a theater club or an English club? Yes, yeah, to both of those. So we have a, an active English club right now. They've been meeting virtually um, consistently throughout the semester. They've had guest speakers. They do um, writing events where they critique each other's writing and prepare you know, assignments in some cases, um, a journal, um, all, all types of stuff. They're a really great group. Uh, the Performing Arts Club um, is, is the club that I would most likely compare to like a theater group. Uh, they're not active right now, um, but they have been very active in the past. And I would anticipate um, having that group active again next year um, as some students have expressed interest in that. When it was active, they were regularly partnering with the Student Union Building on campus or Associated Students Incorporated to host um, open mic nights. Um, different types of performances. Um, they worked with our performing arts department. Uh, in many cases, the students were involved in performing arts and doing performances and shows and all sorts of great stuff. So um, yes, to both of those. Okay. Yeah, we do have a list of uh, requests to see if we, you guys have that available for different clubs, but I will go into that. Uh, the next question is, do we have to join right away or can we join later in the semester? You know, maybe for those who are freshmen might want to consider junior year or something like that. Yeah, good question. I think it's going to be a personal decision for everybody. You know, you got to decide what works best for you. 
Um, there are definitely people that are, you know, knocking on the door right now. They're ready to join, you know, and that's great. Um, so it's okay to join, you know, right at the beginning of a semester. And oftentimes that works really well to be on board from the beginning. Um, but I, I would say all of our groups, with the exception of groups that might have um, like a specific requirement, you know, to, like an honor society or like, you know, some type of, um, you know, process to go through might be unique, like our fraternity sororities have a recruitment season um, that's typically for us in the early spring. Um, outside of that, all the other clubs and orgs, you're pretty much welcome to join whenever you're interested in joining and they want you to join. So um, if it's the first day or it's later in the semester, um, you know, come on, come on board. Uh, for sports clubs, Lauren, um, does it look similar, different? Yeah, they're pretty much open um, whenever you want to join. Uh, if you're joining a club that has a tryout requirement just for a travel team, um, it might be a little too late after tryouts are over, but otherwise they always accept um, all members. Okay, so this might be like a piggyback question. Uh, do you, will students have access to the CI sync when they are admitted or accepted? Um, I guess maybe to clarify with the question, um, would the student be able to have access now is kind of what I'm thinking um, prior to classes starting? That's a great question. Um, I'm not 100% sure uh, how, how it works as far as single sign-on. Um, uh, the credentials go in order to get on CI Sync uh, beyond the public facing page. Um, to, you'd have to use your CI credentials to sign in. So as soon as they have those, um, they would be able to. In the past, um, as early as uh, like freshman and transfer orientation season um, during the summer, students have been able to log in um, because they're able to access um, their credentials that way. So I don't know if you know, Catherine, off the top of your head, when students would have those credentials, but if they have them, they should be able to sign in to, to MyCI um, and to um, CI Sync. Most likely it would be towards orientation. They should be able to have access to that. Usually it's like when they get access to their email. So I would say going closer to orientation. Yeah. So probably if you're looking at your calendar and you want to mark a date for when you can join clubs, then you know probably mm -hmm. June is what you're aiming for, or July. Yes. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you. Um, do we have D1, D2, or D3 school for sports? Not currently. Um, everything's just going to be at the club level. All right. Um, and how much is the fee? Um, so for each sports club, there's that $45 insurance fee. Um, but from there, other clubs might have other requirements. So um, like for soccer, there's a $25 league fee that is paid per person. Um, I think pretty much all of our clubs have a built-in system where they use their club budget to, to pay for those types of things. Okay. Yeah, and then some of the other clubs, uh, like Lauren mentioned, just add on to that. Um, they do have club dues, so like a membership fee, um, but not, not all of them do. So um, okay. in most cases, when they have a membership fee, it's either because they're a part of a national organization, like an honor society, uh, a sorority, for example, might have, you know, membership dues. Um, and then some other um, examples might be, you know, some of our academic groups might, might partner with like an organization nationally, and there's a membership fee that gets you access to like a network. Mm. Um, um, and then other groups don't have anything like that. So they're very much open without any membership dues. Okay. Uh, I know we have a few more minutes here, but I want to try to get as many as we can. Um, do you know if, oh, uh, the other question was, is there a men's volleyball team? Yes, so um, all of our sports are open to everyone. Um, the only club that split is our uh, men's and women's soccer clubs, but volleyball, um, they have a men's team and two women's teams currently. Okay, uh, next question is, do you guys have a club, so, N-E-T-S-E-C, what type of club is that? Uh, it's a network security. So they're learning how to do hacking. Mm -hmm. um, so they've got some faculty on campus that have background in that. Not doing anything illegal, of course, at least I hope <laughs> not. Um, but no, they're, they're learning kind of the ins and outs and how to protect networks and make sure things are secure. Uh, really great stuff. They have a Discord um, that students usually meet on Discord. And then, um, you know, they have their meetings that way and, and have a variety of uh, topics that they go through. 
All right, thank you. Uh, we do have a few more questions. I'm gonna um, ask a couple more. Um, if you like, if you could stay in just a little longer to see if you could yeah. answer through the questions, that would be great. So let me just kind of go through some of these. Um, are there sororities or campus and if, okay. Are there sororities on campus? And if so, how can transfer students go about trying out or joining? Uh, yeah, great question. Um, yes, there are sororities on campus um, and the recruitment is typically in the spring. Um, I think Emily is here, it looks like for the next session, um, the Sigma Omega Nu, mm -hmm. uh, maybe stick around for that and she could share a little bit about their process um, as I'm sure it relates to all the others since they, they do it together. All the sororities do recruitment at the same time. Um, it's typically in the spring semester, and as a transfer student, you should be able to participate. Thank you. And do you know for uniforms, um, are those also, we, they, pay, they would have to pay for their uniforms. Is that correct? Or um, For sports clubs, they're all through campus recreation. So our clubs all have their stuff paid for already, and they're just free for a year. Oh, wow. Do you need to have an interview to get into the club? Depends. Uh, um, you know, kind of, again, with some of the honor societies or, or maybe um, the recruitment process for sororities and fraternities, um, there, there's a couple extra steps there um, that might include an interview or a group process. Um, outside of that, though, uh, they're just glad to have you. So, you know, feel free to join um, and no pressure to be interviewed. Um, and where can they find the information to join? Like more information about sororities and for... Um, yeah, that's a great question. You know, a couple couple spots, I would say, you know, go to CI Sync um, and, and you can check the directory there of organizations, click on the specific group that maybe you're interested in and contact them um, directly that way. Um, you can um, reach out to, to myself or if it's a sports club, reach out to Lauren. Um, and we're glad to connect with you, meet with you, talk through, you know, specific questions that you have. We might be able to answer as well. Um, and then social media would be the other one, you know, potentially going on Instagram. Um, it's probably the best place, I'd say, for our clubs. Um, they're pretty active on there. If you go to the um, at CI underscore student, student orgs account, um, send us a DM there or just look at um, the groups that we're promoting. You can see which ones are active that way, too. Okay. Do you have to know how to surf? Well, to join surf club? <laughs> absolutely <question>. not. <laughs> um, so all of our sports clubs absolutely love when they get people that are new to a sport. So um, you do not have to have any prior experience for any of the sports clubs in order to join. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> you have to try out for sports clubs? Um, only specific ones. So off the top of my head, um, the only ones that host tryouts are um, cheap and soccer. All right, so we have one more minute here. I'm gonna ask one more question before we uh, wrap it up. Uh, is there a snorkeling club? Not that, not that I'm aware of. Uh, students do like snorkeling though, and they can certainly go to the beach, um, but no snorkeling club at this time. Or Lauren, is there anything for the waterfront uh, program? Nope, um, we do have a boating center, quick plug. Um, we have kayaking, sand up, paddle boarding, and sailing, and that's all um, as a class. So you just sign up and go, but it's free for students. Thank you. Thank you so much. There are a couple more questions on the chat in the Q&A, um, Lauren and Russ, if you would be able to answer those. Uh, but sure. thank you so much for joining us today. Um, great questions. We had a lot of students ask great questions. Uh, thank you so much. It's thank our you. pleasure. Thanks for the time.